December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The Pacific tranquility erupts in an orange inferno of war. America is shocked. The once mighty Pacific fleet sits crippled at Pearl Harbor. An enemy fighting force is poised to dominate the Pacific. And one of the last remaining defenders is a converted banana boat. Anchored at the front lines of Bataan in the Philippines, Randall Edwards was there. At the time war started, I was radium in first class. I went aboard the Canopus in 1940 in Tsingtao, China. Uh, and I was on the Canopus until January of 1942, when I volunteered for a job with the Army on Bataan. And the Canopus ended up scuttled in Mar Velas Harbor when General King surrendered Bataan to the Japanese. The Canopus was a submarine tender. Her uh, identification number was AS-9, which means she was the ninth submarine tender in the U.S. Navy. And she wasn't billed as a submarine tender. She was converted from a civilian uh, passenger cargo ship design, originally named uh, Santa Leonora. The Canopus was a happy ship. She was a good ship. She was a bucket of bolts. She was a, a 1917 converted banana boat. There were no bunks on the ship. You slept wherever you could. There was no place to hang a hammock. You slept wherever you could. I slept on a little thin mattress behind my big radio transmitter. We were the mothership for 29 submarines. We supplied them their food, their water, their diesel fuel, their torpedoes, whatever else they need. And did their repair work if we could. Uh, we had machine shops on the Canopus that were as fine a machine shops you'd find anywhere. Submarine tenders uh, in the old days, in uh, 1921, 22 to 1942 to today, do the same thing. Ten submarines serve as mobile bases. Uh, if they're forward deployed, like for all intents and purposes the Canopus was, uh, they provide all the services that a uh, submarine could possibly ask for, from shops to tending uh, various weapon systems. Uh, those the weapon systems have changed, the submarines have changed, uh, but the basic mission of a submarine tender is to support the submarines in the fleet. Captain Sackett, was commanding officer. He was from Nebraska, which is about as far as from the Philippines as you can imagine. Uh, his nickname was Peach at the Naval Academy, class of 1920. Graduated in 1919 because of the accelerated uh, program of training. Uh, I think the the value of, of Commander Sackett was the fact that his ship's morale never faltered, even under some incredibly uh, difficult circumstances. And so I think that's uh, a testament to his uh, leadership, as well as the fact that he was awarded the Navy Cross for his uh, his leadership qualities, and the fact that he was also evacuated in uh, the, one of the last submarines got a corrigan. I don't remember Pearl Harbor because I was on the Canopus in Manila Bay. But we heard about the Pearl Harbor, of course. Uh, I was awakened at about 2.30 in the morning of uh, December the 8th, our time in, in Manila, and told Pearl Harbor had been attacked and to break out code orange that we were in a wartime situation. When the war started, Canopus is in Manila Bay. We were attacked one time while we were in Manila Bay by a fighter plane. I was on the Corn Opus in the radio shack. We were still manning the communication circuits, so the, the radio operation was still going on. We couldn't transmit, but we could receive. The first time that we were hit was a fighter plane in Manila Bay. I had my old 50 caliber going up there. Brrr, I followed that, that plane right, coming right in there to the Canopus. I got followed him so far. <laughs> I went into my, they had a half inch steel shell shield around a 50 caliber water cooling machine gun. 
my last bullets were going into that shield, and they were <laughs> flying around in there. Right? But I was shooting, and we were bombed almost every day. The Japanese would bomb the Canopus. As long as she was upright, and looked like she was a functional ship. The ship was put out of commission as far as going anywhere. But a, a big bomb went down all the way through the, the multiple decks and exploded on the propeller shaft. With the Canopus being uh, immobile, the, she was essentially a, a sitting duck. They decided to abandon the Canopus during the day and make her look like a derelict. So they tied ropes on the, on the mast and heeled her over during the day. And the crew went up in the jungle where they were safe. They would come back at night, loosen the ropes, straighten her out, do whatever, go on about their business, doing whatever they had to do, including making ice cream. <laughs> uh, if, uh, if a submarine had come in and they, they needed help, they gave it to them. If the, Army needed help, and they did. The Army had, they, they did a lot of things for the Army on the Canopus with, them, with their machine shops. And things were pretty desperate. The Canopus crew was formed into a Navy battalion on the ship. This is right where Bataan and everything was still fighting. And they, uh, they didn't have any uniforms to go through the jungle or anything. And, uh, you know, didn't, the whites would be outstanding. So they dyed white uniforms with coffee to try to tone them down. And the Japs had made a landing up on the east side of the Bataan Peninsula. And they sent the Navy up there to, to stop them. Well, we lost a goodly number of people. Finally, the Filipino scouts came in and uh, took over from the, from the sailors and got the sailors out of the way and they polished off the Japanese that, that were remaining. I think that was probably the only offensive action that the, that the Canopus took. They serviced the last submarine the week of April 1st. We still had torpedoes, still had food, still had diesel fuel. We had lost our torpedo base in a bombing of Cavite, where they had all of the torpedo magazines and head, warheads and everything stored earlier in the war. 